hi folks welcome to my youtube channel so today we will go over the de-squamatal interstitial pneumonia so before we go over the dip let's revisit the algorithm for the chronic interstitial pneumonia so whenever we have a transbronchial biopsy or open lung biopsy and when it the when it comes to under the microscope so first thing we have to notice about the lesion is whether the lesion is a diffuse or versus the patchy. And if we have the diffuse lesion, then our differential includes DIP, NSIP, and the LIP. Then the second thing is that whether the lesion is all in the one stage or whether the lesion is a patchy or in the different stages. If the lesion is in the, all the lesion is in the one stage, then we can call it as a we have a temporal homogeneity of the lesion then we can further continue on our all three differentials and then it comes to the intensity of a mononuclear infiltrates however other than the intensity of a mononuclear infiltrates there are some different features which can distinguish one from another and if we have a low mononuclear infiltrate and then uh, we have a high number of uh, macrophages in the alveolar sex then our most likely diagnosis is the dip but there are other features as well which can distinguish from one from another so let's continue our uh, discussion so starting from the definition so uh, is the name implies d squamative interstitial pneumonia so the name itself says like there is a peeling off or de squamation of the epithelium which comes into the uh, alveolar septa or filling up the alveolar spaces however now it has been seen that there is no peeling of the epithelial cells but those are the macrophages so initially in 1965 dr libo and others reported some uh, case series of cases which uh, uh, in which they saw that there is a de squamation of the epithelial cells and then they term it uh, term uh, coined the term as a de squamative interstitial pneumonia however in 1977 dr trubs and other determined on the basis of an electron microscope that these de squamative cells are not the epithelial cells but they are the macrophages and in 2013, American Thoracic Society and the European Respiratory Society categorized DIP as a smoking-related interstitial pneumonia. And uh, many authors also emphasize that the DIP is the severe form of a, a respiratory bronchiolitis, which we discussed in our previous video. So the definition is the, a form of a interstitial lung diseases with a numerous and the diffusely presence of alveolar macrophages in the distal air spaces. So in terms of epidemiology, it is common in the middle age and the uh, middle age and commonly more involve the males compared to the females. Uh, however, the overall incidence is very rare and it is less than 1% with the interstitial lung disease. So the etiology, majority of the cases are the adult patients which have the history of a current or being a ex smokers and there is some pediatric population which can also involve which includes mutation into the surfactant protein c or the atp binding cassettes protein a3 however these are very rare so discussing about the clinical features it has a wide range so the some people can be totally asymptomatic or mild to uh, moderate uh, respiratory symptoms which includes dyspnea and exertion, dry curve, digital clubbing or some people can present in the last stage of the fibrosis and then uh, they will have to undergo the lung transplantation. So it depends at what stage the patient is presenting. While the radiology is, uh, radiology is still a non-specific but still it can help to aid on the diagnosis so as we said uh, in our definition that it is a diffuse and a homogeneous process so on the radiology we have a bilateral symmetrical uh, ground glass opacities 
which has some granular or the nodular type of a pattern which histologically will translate into that the alveolar spaces are filled with the macrophages so let's discuss about the histology so this is the first slide which is on the low power so is in this slide we can see that first is the lesion is a diffuse process and the second is that the all the lesion is, is it is in the one stage of the process so if we go on the high power here we can see that the alveolar septa are lined with the type 1 and the type 2 pneumocytes and this whole alveolar space is filled with the uh, cells which are now uh, 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 proven as the macrophages and sometimes scatterd we can have a giant cells as well and if we throw the cd68 it will highlight these cells while the cd68 will be negative on the alveolar septa but reversely if we do a pan keratin the it will be positive on the alveolar septal cells which includes type 1 and the type 2 pneumocytes but it will be negative inside the air spaces so this is one of the stain uh, which which is the pan keratin stain which is positive on the alveolar wall however the cells inside the alveolar spaces are the negative and this is the cd68 stain which highlights those macrophages so as we discussed uh, earlier that there is an interrelationship and the overlapping between the respiratory bronchiolitis and the dip so some authors emphasize that it is a severe form of a rbild if the patient continues smoking then the rbild will con uh, convert into the dip but many authors at the same time also indicate that it is not a disease itself it is a le it is a process which can underlies many other diseases as well while discussing about the treatment so the majority and the major treatment is the cessation of a smoking which can generally leads to the regressions of the symptoms and some patient may respond to the corticosteroids as well overall the prognosis is much better than the uip and the other type of interstitial pneumonia and a very very small number of the patient can progress pro progress to the diffuse interstitial fibrosis and require the transplantation so this is the end of my video so thank you so much